Hello Bernadette, I'm Jackie. I am the medical journalist for New York Times. I'm Jackie. Um, the reason I'm interviewing you here is because I want um, people to know what to expect um, when they come for a stress test, you know, the diagnostic test of the number one killer in America, which is coronary artery disease. So it's very important, and you are a medical professional. You are a nurse and an exercise physiologist that on a daily basis perform these stress tests. So you're more than qualified to give me that information. So for people that have ordered already a stress echo and are going to go to their appointment, what preparation is there? What should they do to get ready for their appointment? We tell patients bring shoes and pants, but beside that, um, there are recurring stress cycles and nuclear stresses, slight different preparations, but both very important. I would like to point out stress cycle, which is um, we tell patients two hours prior, no food, no drink. And the reason is that because if the test is positive, further testing need to be done. Perhaps maybe patient needs cardiac catheterization. For nuclear stress tests, the same thing somewhat. However, um, four hours prior, no food, no drink. And the reason is that because nuclear medicine will inject a radioisotope, and that isotope has to target the heart, called thallium. And if, if that thallium, if the patient eats and the stomach is full, that thallium will go to the stomach with the blood flow for digestion. So it's going to miss the target of the heart. So you've mentioned two types of stress testing, so stress echo and nuclear. Why would a physician order one over the other? They're both screening for coronary disease. Yes. Um, if, if the doctor believes this, there's less chance or less possibility for somebody has, um, somebody might have some blockage, stress echo would be a proper test. I would say for me, I don't have uh, family history of coronary artery disease. I don't have personally blood pressure, cholesterol problem. Uh, so I would be a good candidate for a stress echo. If someone has already a known coronary artery disease, stent, bypass surgery, a nuclear stress test would be more uh, definite. Okay. Uh, so for those patients that can't do a treadmill or maybe limited, treadmill, what do you do with those patients? Yes, very good question. Stress test is people think right away, mm -hmm. yes, it's right. treadmill. We perform uh, stress tests with uh, uh, medications, which actually will do the stress test for the patient. We use two types of medication, the butamine and also regadenosine. Both, uh, both medications actually are very good medications. Um, we use for the for patients who cannot really walk on the treadmill, diabetic neuropathy, uh, amputated legs, or elderly folks. Are there any side effects from these medications? Yes, both medications come with some side effects. With the butamine, we want to do the same thing, like people walk on the treadmill, increasing the heart rate. Um, it takes longer to get out uh, from the system that medication. We don't really favor that medication. The other medication we can use for the nuclear purposes, um, um, regadenosine, which is a vasodilator. It uh, dilates the blood vessels. Um, so we're asking six times more blood flow all over in the body, and that's how we're stressing the heart. And those side effects for that? Yes. One? The side effect is um, warm heart sensation, shortness of breath, uh, headache, uh, fullness in the abdomen. We always tell patients these symptoms come, speak, and subside. Um, some patient feels actually none of the symptoms. Some patient feels all. So and for those that have um, bad side effects or can't tolerate it. Is there an antidote or something you can give them? Absolutely, there is an antidote. Um, we wait a little bit just to see natural way um, it will take care of, but definitely cardiology call, there's an antidote, it reverses right away. Okay.
Okay. Called aminophilin. Aminophilin. Okay. And what do you monitor on the pa any patient going cardiac stress test? They go there. What do you expect them to be hooked up on? Or yeah. Patients being monitored very, very co closely, continuous uh, EKG, 12 leads monitor. Uh, we're looking for um, ischemia, not enough oxygen and blood supplies to the heart. If it happens, um, I would say 90% patient feels symptoms with that, chest pain, jaw pain, arm pain. Um, also, we're looking for blood pressure wristband, heart rate wristband, um, arrhythmia, irregular heart rhythm. If the patient walks on the treadmill, um, we want them to walk further and so watch their capacity. So you, you also want, you can see what their exercise capacity is. Absolutely. But does that make it a more reliable test? Yes, that's going to give us, like if somebody can go further further on the treadmill, there's less chance they have um, any coronary problem. Okay. And what has been a biggest challenge that you've encountered with um, you know, treating someone or that's going to about to undergo a stress test? How do you deal with patient fear, basically? Yeah, fear is very powerful for these patients. They come with a high anxiety level. Um, very much work on absolutely explain the test, the nature of the test, um, the possible outcomes, and also ensure them, ensure them um, cardiologist is in the department. We have an excellent team, um, expertise, and just let them know they are in good hand. Um, and um, Besides being a nurse and you know, you're a nurse and an exercise physiologist, so I'm sure everyone's safe with you. What train? Uh, what additional training do you have to undergo besides nursing school? And yeah, lots of lots of uh, practical training on site. When I started, um, I was being supervised uh, by registered nurses, co-workers, cardiologists. Also, I had to take, or we all have to uh, have to take an uh, EKG course. Read, lots of rhythm strips, reading it, analyzing it, and uh, lots of practice, lots of lots of practice. Very good. Well, it's a very pleasure, um, very informative interview. I have to thank you very much. Thank and you. Learned a lot. Thank you, Dougie. Okay.